You at the Zoo is an eTech Ohio project produced in partnership with CET, Think TV, and the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, with additional support provided by the Robert Gould Foundation. Hi, I'm Thane Maynard from the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. And I'm Ebony from the U at the Zoo team. And yes, it's time to talk about the birds and the bees. Actually, Ebony, we're going to talk about rhinos and reproduction. Specifically, how reproduction can result in new genetic combinations and variability. You see, rhinos, birds, bees, and most multicellular organisms reproduce with the help of two parents through a process called sexual reproduction. Here to tell us more about it is Monica Stoops, a crew scientist at the Cincinnati Zoo. Through sexual reproduction, we get new traits that are produced, and that comes from the genetic component of both the mother and the father. And those recombination of genes produce a trait that's either beneficial or, in some cases, could be detrimental. For Indian rhinos, we want to be sure that we're preserving, to the greatest extent possible, the genetic diversity of the wild source population. And we need to reproduce these animals in captivity because that may be the only way to save them from extinction. Rhinos face many challenges in the wild. One, loss of habitat, and two, poaching. One of the challenges that we face in breeding rhinos in captivity is that sometimes the males and females live in different locations. So who we want to match up as the best genetic match may live in a different state or a different country. For example, Nikki, our female Indian rhino, her best genetic match was a male named Vinu who was located at the Bronx Zoo in New York. We had to develop both sperm collection and cryopreservation so that we could collect sperm from Vinu. And his sperm was actually cryopreserved for four years in our cryobiobank before being used to inseminate Nikki. One of the most important things that I don't think that people know about rhinos is how wonderful they are as individual animals. When you work with these individual animals, you realize that they've got individual personalities just like us. They can have good days and bad days, but they are animals that you can actually work work with, do science with, and the biggest part is you could make a difference in the world with. So Dr. Ebony, what are you up to now? Well Thane, Monica Stoops has invited the U at the Zoo team behind the scenes to check on Nikki's progress. Hi, I'm Portia. And I'm Charles, and today we're checking on Nikki's progress. What are Nikki's favorite treats? What you see me feeding her right now are actually the biscuits that we give to our gorillas. But just like with any special treat, she doesn't get that many, and this is only for a special occasion. She gets special rewards for her ultrasounds and stuff like that. Are you doing this because you think she's pregnant or just for a general monitor? She actually is pregnant. That's why we're only monitoring her once a month, and we just keep track on how the fetus is growing and how it's developing. And we also track her hormones to see how that's maintained as well. All right, so we're going to put some lube on here. And we're going to push this up here to her belly and see if we can get an image of the fetus. Anything white that we see is going to be the fetus itself. Yep. Right there. That's cool. <laughs> How hard is it usually to find the fetus? It's actually pretty hard at this point. What I see a lot of is the fluid that surrounds the baby, but the baby itself is pretty deep down. How far along is she? She is 260 days of gestation, and they have about a 470 day gestation, so about 16 months. So she is just over halfway through. And you can see Nikki's really good about this process. How big will the calf be when it's born? Baby Indian rhinos are approximately 90 to 100 pounds at birth. Adult females are about 3,500 pounds, and the males over 4,000. Pounds. When they're born, do they have horns or do those grow after they're already born? When they're born, they just have a little nub and then it'll grow afterwards. And I think Nikki probably appreciates the fact that it just has a little <laughs> tiny horn at birth. But actually, horns are made of the same substance as your hair and your fingernails. So it grows in the same manner that those do. Good girl, Nikki. Looking good, Nikki. This is wild. While sexual reproduction once required both parents being together, these two rhinos have never even met. Either way, this baby will have traits from both Nikki and Vinu and play an important role in increasing the genetic diversity of the Indian rhino species. I'm Thane Maynard. And I'm Ebony. And, and we'll, we'll see you at the zoo. zoo.